And let's bring you now the chairs of the Congress's two Foreign Affairs Committee, Democratic Senator Robert Menendez, the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, Republican Congressman Ed Royce, the chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. And Senator, uh, let me begin with you. You just heard this from uh, Lon Snowden and his attorney, Bruce Fine. They don't believe that Ed Snowden could have gotten a fair hearing had he come to Congress. I don't think that's true. Look, I, I as a father, appreciate the vigorous defense that Mr. Snowden is providing for his son. Uh, but in my view, Ed Snowden is a fugitive who deserves to be in American courtroom, not in asylum in Russia. And I believe he would have gotten a fair hearing. As a matter of fact, all the time, issues related to our government by whistleblowers who come forth and bring those issues to the Congress's attention is often the venue for action. So uh, the reality is I don't think he needed to undermine America's national security to pursue whatever he thought his conscience uh, led him to do. And I do believe there is a process by which he could have ultimately pursued his interests in a way that doesn't undermine the national security of the United States. When we have our sources and methods known by our enemies, uh, we undermine the national security of the United States. And I would just simply say, uh, you know, it's easy since we have not, thank God, had an attack on American soil since September 11th to deminimize the threat. But the threat is real. And the terrorists have to only get lucky once. We have to do it right 100% and, of the time. That's a tough stand. And Chairman Royce, a key member of your committee, Rep Representative Dana Rohrabacher, uh, from California, who's also chair of the subcommittee dealing with Russia, seems also to have some sympathy with Edward Snowden. Here's what he said yesterday on C-SPAN. In fact, he was being loyal to the rest of us by letting the American people know that their government was getting out of hand. Accepting him for asylum, uh, I think, uh, was not as hostile an act as, as it's being portrayed. Do you agree with those views on Edward Snowden and Russia? No, I do not. And we have to keep in mind here that the conundrum we're in is one in which al-Qaeda is first trying to learn, out, learn how we track them. And second, you know, with this new master bomb maker that they've used in Yemen uh, to develop this new strategy, the underwear bomber, for example, his attempted attack was at the behest, at the, uh, with the support of this master bomb maker. This master bomb maker now is teaching his trade, we happen to know, to a lot of other bomb makers in that part of the world, in Yemen, and they're going on the internet with this capability and with the hope of bringing into the United States uh, agents to carry out these types of attacks, attacks which are undetectable. Uh, and so we're in the process of trying to monitor what al-Qaeda is doing overseas and here in the United States in order to try to replicate that particular attempted attack and to expand it demonstrably. And so when you have someone who is giving out the means and methods uh, in which we're tracking al-Qaeda, it is a problem for the United States. And secondarily, when we're talking about the former head of the KGB, President Putin in Russia, uh, this, this has not been an ally. As you know, the administration has tried to engage him uh, on several issues, such as uh, uh, missile defense, and, and has worked with him on uh, trade issues, and we have not seen any reciprocation from the Russians so, on this, because this former KGB agent still has a sense of hostility so Senator, uh, to the West so, and to the United States. So, Senator Menendez, how do we get this relationship with Russia back on track. The president says there's nothing, no bad relations between he and President Putin personally, but they do seem to be at odds on just about every major issue. Well, look, you know, uh, Russia should be looking towards how do they achieve a prosperous future for all of their citizens versus going back to an authoritarian past. And we seem to be more invested in this effort to create a relationship with Russia that can be uh, productive for both countries uh, more than Putin is. And so it seems to me that uh, as we've tried to restart this relationship several times, that maybe now is a moment of pause and think about uh, how we're going to move forward with Russia. They are unresponsive to us as it relates to the tragedies that are going on in Syria. They are unresponsive to us as it relates to further uh, nuclear arms reduction 
reproduction. Uh, they are unresponsive when uh, they violate the rights of gay and lesbians, uh, including foreign visitors who would come to Russia and could be arrested. They're unresponsive when they ultimately stop the adoptions by Americans of Russian children. So I look at all of that and so much more, and I say to myself, it's time to pause and think about what this relationship is going to be and how we're going to pursue it in a way that ultimately promotes the national interest and security Finally, of the United Congress States. Finally, Congressman Royce, we have just a few seconds left. Do you think that Ed Snowden can get a fair trial in the United States? Well, I think he could get a fair trial in the United States. And, and I think that the concern here is that in, in going to China and going to Russia, and in particular with respect to the authorities that he's meeting with in Russia, I think this further compounds the problem for U.S. intelligence. Uh, and uh, I, I, I think we have existing whistleblower capabilities here in the United States. On a regular basis, whistleblowers come forward, give information to Congress, and we attempt to address those issues. Going to China and going to Russia was not the solution to the problem. It compounds our yeah. difficulties in the United States with respect to al-Qaeda. Congressman, Senator, thanks very much for your time this morning.